Okay, uh, today I'm excited to uh, have an opportunity to again uh, visit with my good friend Lindsay Mitchell and I wanted to start off by, by giving a little bit of information about Lindsay and uh, what she's been up to and uh, then she's going to share with us. I know a lot of things that will be very helpful to our listeners. Uh, Lindsay Mitchell is the founder of VitalSide, a program designed to calm the chronic stress response in people with chronic illnesses. She helps people with mold toxicities, Lyme disease, fibromyalgia, and other chronic conditions go from a state of fight, flight, freeze to a place of freedom and security in their bodies. Five years ago, Lindsay started working in medicine as an internal medicine physician's assistant, PAC. And after recovering from chronic Lyme disease, she now makes it her mission to help others with chronic pain, fatigue, brain fog, to find relief from their persistent symptoms using their most valuable resource, the brain. Lindsay offers a virtual brain retraining course to help people jumpstart the process of growth and repair or achieving a parasympathetic reset. She works as a neuroplasticity coach and holds weekly community calls for clients in the Vital Side program. Lindsay utilizes tools like positive visualization, laughter, and state changing exercises to empower those with chronic illness to boost their immune system and regain their health. So Lindsay, welcome. Thank you, Dr. Taylor. I appreciate it. And thank you for that intro. Sure. You know, and just as kind of a little aside, uh, I hope you don't mind if I say that, you know, we first met when you were having some of your clinical issues yeah. and uh, we got to be involved in trying to move you from where you were to where you are now. And you right now you're such an example of what can, can happen from, from, for people with chronic illness. And uh, I, I know you actually were so big and instrumental and me learning a lot more about the role of the brain and neuroplasticity and the way that uh, trauma, prior life trauma, current life trauma uh, can play such a big role in the actual objective symptoms of illness that I see in my practice every day. The, you know, the things that I just mentioned, the chronic fatigue, the pains, the digestive disorders, the, the mood symptoms, the sleep symptoms. So yeah, I just really always, you have a very uh, warm place in my heart because you've helped me evolve as a pr practitioner. I think you've brought a whole nother layer of what I can offer people and, as a healer. So I'm excited again to talk to you. And you know, this is a follow up for us. We do have some prior visits that are on YouTube and I would encourage people to maybe go back and look at some of that. But why don't you just tell us, uh, you know, what's going on in, in your life with uh, Vital Side and what you've been up to, especially in the last two or three months as a result of all these crazy things that are going on around us as a community. Sure, yeah. And I think every single business right now has had to shift, but you and I work in this community where people are experiencing chronic illness, if there's a pandemic or not but we still have to shift and we still have to figure out what the best kind of approach is in a situation like this. And I know uh, when we all heard that word pandemic that week, I had to make a decision to make a shift um, because people were starting to stay at home. Um, people were, were still dealing with their chronic symptoms every day, that pain, brain fog, fatigue, and all of a sudden that was being put on the back burner. So I think within the last couple of months, I have kind of made it my mission to say, hey, you know, we know that you're still out there. We know that you're still dealing with these chronic symptoms and we can do something about it even from your home. So that week that that happened, I made a decision to make my uh, vital side program fully virtual so that people all over the world could just go online, purchase the program, have five days of information where they get the science, the tools um, at a cheaper price and a program that they could do 
on their own daily. And so they could make these changes to their brains and to their symptoms from the comfort and the safety of their homes um, and start to find some relief from their symptoms. And I think that's just so important because right now we're all feeling the physical, the emotional, the mental repercussions of trauma that's happening everywhere. And to kind of empower ourselves, even having a chronic illness, even having chronic symptoms, to make shifts, to make positive changes to our health, um, it's just so impactful, you know, it's so empowering. And it's necessary right now when we need those tools more than ever. Well, you know, why don't you just say a little bit about how uh, you're uh, learning about more uh, stress management, how to approach that stress piece of chronic illness uh, made a change for your life yeah. and, and why you ended up, you know, embracing that as your life's work now. Yeah. So, you know, you mentioned that we've had this relationship for years because I actually started coming to see you, you know, as a patient, wanting answers, wanting to know how to um, get rid of my bacteria that had been this buildup of, you know, toxic overload um, after having been diagnosed with Lyme disease. And at the time, you know, I had previously worked as a physician assistant. I knew that information but I was still sick. I was, you know, taking the medication, doing different treatments, and some of it, you know, helped quite a bit. And detox was a necessary part of my journey um, and, and treating the bacteria itself. But I got to this place where I was feeling a plateau in um, how I was feeling. I wasn't really finding relief from my symptoms. I was still having pain. I was still hyper vigilant and anxious. I still had food sensitivities. And I had lived such an active life prior to that. And all of a sudden, my whole world was turned upside down. So what I began to realize was my brain had actually formed these neural pathways for stress, and I became what's called sympathetic dominant, kind of operating from that fight, flight, freeze response. Um, pretty much my entire life, starting with childhood trauma, and then, you know, kind of getting sick, exposed to environmental toxins while I was working as a travel PA, and then ending up, you know, getting bitten by a tick. So that became, those became little elements to my perfect storm, which was that tick bite. And my body just couldn't handle it anymore. So when I realized, like, I was living in this place of sympathetic dominance, um, it, it just clicked. You know, it was, there's just something about it where I was like, yes, I need to address my brain to make changes to my body. And I did. I did a couple different programs to start to retrain these old neural pathways that were geared towards stress and shift from that uh, sympathetic dominance into parasympathetic dominance. And in that state, that growth and repair state, it allows room for um, attention being paid to the immune system, the ability to detox better because you're coming from a place of rest and digest and growth and repair. And you feel more relaxed, you feel more at ease because a threat is not immediately present and your brain is saying, I'm comfortable, I'm safe, I can relax. And in that state, that's when you start to feel better. And that was kind of what I needed to really take me over to the edge of, of healing, of just progressing and ultimately making a recovery from Lyme disease. And I love talking about that because it's just not something you hear all the time and I haven't had you know a symptom of Lyme in years and I have the tools now to kind of stay in that parasympathetic response for you know most of the time and elevate my life in a way where now my immune system is strong now I've kind of I describe it as you know 
putting our like creating armor like building armor and to become this warrior and this strong person and that's just not who you feel when you're that's not the way that you feel when you have a chronic illness and so i'm just i'm so passionate about it now to be able to give these tools using your own brain from your own home to find relief from symptoms to people who just have felt disempowered for maybe most of their lives. You know, I'll just uh, still remember like it was yesterday uh, when you call, I think you called me or asked me to call you back and basically told me that, you know, the work that we had done to get you to a better place where you were, but still not where you wanted to be, that you had just been able to make this huge leap. And I think it was only like in about two weeks since you had started becoming active with one of these other programs that's available uh, for stress management or brain retraining, tapping into neuroplasticity, that basically, I think you told me, Dr. Taylor, I haven't felt this way, this good in, in months and months. Mm -hmm. And you've got you've to look at this, you've got to understand this. And of course, I already knew that so many of my patients were telling me about, yes, there was environmental triggers to their illness, such as a tick bite or exposure to a pesticide, but there were also traumatic triggers to their symptoms of and signs of chronic illness, whether it would be digestive symptoms or sleep loss or, or a rash, and that indeed it was a trigger, and so it made perfectly sense that perfect sense that to deal with it was also a way to get get over it. But and and after you did it, then you became really passionate about helping other people and uh, believe me, you've helped many of my patients uh, since you've been active in this area, but why is it important that we address stress now? Well, you know, you mentioned trauma feeds that stress response, and so I think it's important to kind of define trauma a little bit more into physical trauma, you know, an injury or an accident or an illness. Um, mental trauma, emotional trauma, something that has happened that maybe we replay over and over again in our heads because it was such an intense experience. So our bodies and our brains memorize this trauma through those neurochemicals, through these stress hormones. And so when we have that exposure to the trauma, all of a sudden we go into this acute fight flight freeze mode and we've got this increase in cortisol and adrenaline and other stress hormones to kind of get us away from that threat but what happens is and what i'm seeing now especially you know after the pandemic was named <laughs> is that that acute trauma that acute stress is becoming chronic and more and more people are coming to me and they're saying, I had a few symptoms before, or maybe I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease in the past, but now every day since the pandemic, I have had anxiety. I have had fatigue, which is that freeze response. I have had, you know, um, heightened sense of perception. And I just become super sensitive when I hear something on the news that is very triggering, like you mentioned. And what happens is, is that trauma feeds trauma. So we're going from this acute stress response to chronic and now we're what three four months in and that's when that chronic stress response is starting to happen and and dr taylor that's those are the people that we see are people who are in that chronic stress response and they come to you because they've had this buildup of toxins and they're sick and then, you know, maybe you refer them to me because you've identified this is the chronic stress response. So what's amazing is together we can kind of, you can address that toxic overload and then I can address the chronic stress response in the brain. And that's that warrior mentality. Then all of a sudden we're together creating that sense of safety in the body and this sort of baseline for that growth and repair response so the immune system can start to work better. And all of a sudden your body is working for you instead of against you. And I think, you know, now we kind of have this opportunity 
we're at home more. Um, maybe you've had an incredible like life shift, a job change, a relationship change just as a result of the pandemic. But now that we're, we're, we've had that trauma exposure, it's this unique time to now address it and make a change to it and spend a few minutes, you know, half an hour, an hour a day committed to making positive changes to your brain so that you can experience that sense of joy, of health, of happiness again. And it's absolutely possible, you know, even from your home, even with the current global situation that we're in, it's absolutely possible. And I think that's more important than ever to understand now. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into a little bit more exactly what that involves for people from your perspective. But one thing I would say is, you know, uh, with the pandemic and of course, a lot of people being focused on fear of either catching an infection or yeah. if they should catch an infection, mm -hmm. having a worse outcome from it. Uh, and of course, that so much involves the uh, function of their immune system. Uh, one of the things I've learned is that when we're in this place of fight, flight, or freeze, uh, the immune system is measurably hampered. Mm -hmm. And if we can come and stay in that place of calmness and tranquility, the parasympathetic, that we have lots of good, solid scientific research, both in humans and even in lab animals, to show that's probably one of the quickest and easiest and best ways to improve our chances from an immune perspective with a, a new infection. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's something, and it's something that we can do ourselves. We don't need to rely on something else or you know, ingest something else. And although those things can be helpful, this is something that's sustainable and something that we can do now, today. So, I, I mean, I love this process. Sure. So um, I, I know your, your whole process of vital side has kind of been evolving a little bit since you established it, especially lately. But why don't you talk a little bit about, you know, really uh, help our viewers understand uh, what they might be looking at if they were to try to take advantage of it. Yeah. So it all kind of depends on what you're looking for. Now, uh, I mentioned before how the content is available. So you can almost go to vital-side.com, purchase the Vital Side program, and start today. Basically, what it consists of is the science behind how the brain changes, and then a very structured protocol that you'll use um, daily, a quick one that just takes two minutes so you can make these positive changes to your brain. I call it a mental exercise or a state changing exercise because it actually changes our neurochemicals that we experience, it changes our physiology. Um, and then a longer one that you can use to actually make changes to the things that you have triggers to the food, the environmental, you know, maybe an allergen even in the environment. It can help you to make these changes to that, or maybe it's an activity. Um, maybe, you know, you're stiff and you've got pain. That was something that I definitely trained with and got to the place where I changed my brain's association to an activity so that I can be more mobile, that I can move my body. Um, so there's those longer exercises as well. And it's a very structured protocol specifically for people who have chronic illness or chronic symptoms. And you can take it at your own pace, which is really nice. So that is available, those mental exercises, mental rehearsal. And there's actually studies, there was a study done in 2014 where mental rehearsal, actually thinking about um, exercising actually changes um, the muscle tone in the body. So mental rehearsal is really, really powerful. Um, we can actually make changes to our bodies through our thoughts, but doing it in a structured way is super important, especially if you have a chronic illness or chronic symptoms. 
Um, and then in addition to that, you can get that for one price. And in addition to that, if you want one-on-one -on -one time with me, if you want weekly community calls where people are retraining their brains, are focused on healing, are progressing together, that's available as well um, for a separate fee. And all of those things are discounted once you purchase the Vital Side program. So if you're looking for more accountability, if you're looking for a community, um, if you're looking to ask me questions, those things are all available. Um, and I, I like this process. I, I like the way it's laid out now because it kind of leaves you the option. Like, what do you want? What can you use today? And, um, you know, if you do need me, I am there. And I, I love meeting people one-on-one. -on -one. And um, if, if you're not sure, if you're like, I, I don't quite know if this is right for me, I do always offer complimentary consults. They're now 40 minutes long, so I spend tons of time with you learning your story uh, to really understand if this is an option that makes sense for you at this time. Um, so that's wow. definitely something, one of my favorite things, <laughs> one of my favorite parts of Vital Side. That's really, really nice of you. So yeah, one of the things I've noticed speaking to the community concept is that, you know, we, we do uh, IV nutrient therapy in our practice here. And a lot of times that does involve people being together in a, yeah. a shared space uh, to receive those treatments. And a lot of our patients have reported to us the value of the community, of mm -hmm. just having that opportunity to share with each other and to share with the nurses. Uh, it, it's they, a lot of them report that it's been part of their healing process. Yeah. So I guess that's been important for you uh, to see how this community has actually been a uh, part of the way that people have, have gotten better. Yes, absolutely. And it's less of a support group and more of a focus on progress group. And that's also what I love about it too, because each session, you know, we always get time to check in with each other and, you know, focus on the things that are helping us to improve, but also kind of delve a little bit deeper into the neuroplastic world, meaning, you know, how the brain changes. So we go through topics like epigenetics, you know, how we can actually change our genetic expression. Um, we go through topics like visualization, how to use positive imagery in your practice so that you can find the results that you want. And then we check in. Um, we're always learning new tools and that's what I love about it too is that it's constantly being updated So if some kind of new technique is uh, talked about in a study then I start to implement it in vital side ed So I love those classes. They're so much fun and just having that community that core group of people who meet weekly it it does a lot for motivation and accountability so I see those people start to thrive maybe faster than someone who would just kind of do the program on their own. Exactly. And I've always told people that when it comes to controlling stress and learning to shift their brain, that it's something that requires, it requires repetition. I mean, you can teach them, uh, but you can't just put that under your pillow and sleep on it. Yeah, it's a process. It takes that repetition and consistency. And, um, and that's what's cool about the community too, is that it just gives you that momentum to keep moving forward. Cause then you hear from somebody else like, oh, this is what I do to stay motivated. And you're like, okay, let me write that down. And maybe I can use that. Yeah. Um, this is so what that, I do and this is what I get from it too. Yeah. yeah. I, I like that you say, it's not a support group. It's a progress update. Yeah, yeah, it's a, we focus on progress. That's our intention wow. is like progressive healing. That's our focus. Um, because I know, I mean, I know having Lyme disease, going to a support group can sometimes feel more like it's doing more harm than good. Sometimes it's really great. But at the place that I was at when I started going to the support group, I just felt discouraged. And I, one of my intentions in Vital Side was to grow a community of people who are encouraged, 
who want to take control of their health and want to see these positive changes. Um, and so, you know, that's my intention each week is to make sure that that's what we're focused on, um, encouragement and moving forward and that progression. Um, it, it is so beneficial in the process of healing. Yeah, so I know we, we have to be conscious about uh, the HIPAA and personal privacy, but give us a sense of what you've seen uh, since you've been involved in this. Uh, maybe it's a few vignettes and some uh, some anecdotes. Yeah, so I, I mean, I work with people who have all different kind of chronic conditions. One of my like favorite um, symptoms to work with is food sensitivities because I can generally see changes in um, we that that can be easily measured, right? That's kind of tangible that you can see changes in that pretty fast. Um, but I work with people, you know, from all different ends of the spectrum, from people who um, have chronic conditions. Maybe they were diagnosed with EDS, and they have food sensitivities, and they have you know fatigue. Or maybe they just come to me with one chronic symptoms, pain or, or food sensitivities. And I get kind of this same feedback after a couple weeks. If you're using the tools daily, all of a sudden people start to feel a sense of calm and ease and, and maybe a little bit more peace. People will write me, I've got a forum that I look at every day and I get these messages like, all of a sudden I woke up and I had a smile on my face and I was excited about the day. And the, those are the little shifts you start to notice at first. And then when you start to train with something specific, like a sensitivity to food, um, like, like say it, it's um, bread, say gluten, that's a common sensitivity, right? And Although we know it's inflammatory and, and, you know, should be eaten in moderation, being able to see a shift from like someone who hasn't eaten bread in years to starting to implement it into their practice, having that piece of bread, going through their practice, changing their brain's association to it. So they don't respond in a hyper inflammatory way when they eat it. It's just so important for people to start living their lives and not feeling limited by their illness. And so, yeah, measuring food sensitivities, I think it's just so fun because you can kind of do that weekly and then all of a sudden at the end of the maybe four weeks, they're like, oh my gosh, Lindsay, I, I started to eat bread again and in moderation. And it just feels so good to be able to do that and to help people understand that they do have control over their lives, that they are not limited by their chronic symptoms. And once they start seeing small changes, like being able to eat the foods that they love again, all of a sudden the brain memorizes this as evidence. So that creates motivation to continue to practice. And when they're operating more so in that parasympathetic response, all of a sudden, hey, I'm doing more things. I'm more active. I just talked to uh, a chiropractor friend yesterday who referred someone to me. And she said she's been working with this person for, for pain. She's like, she's been more mobile and more active in the last month than I have seen her in years. And she comes in with a smile on her face. And it's just that, you know, that is the reason why I'm so passionate about this and helping others to understand the brain body connection because it's so real. And when we address the brain and we address the body, it's like this magic starts to happen and, and these neural pathways are starting to change and shift and that makes changes to the body. Um, Do you so, actually have them tabulate their food intolerances or their de degrees of food intolerance as, as you work with them? Um, every single person is different. Some people will, will keep track, will love to keep track of it. I do, there is like a structured plan on how to do that in the guidebook that's given to you when you um, purchase the program. And the way that you train, getting really specific how long you're gonna train with each thing is so important to then get that evidence because we can often forget that progress we're making if we're not keeping track. 
love that. Um, yeah. And then some people like to, to keep track of like sympathetic dominance by measuring heart rate variability. And there are all these different tools to, you know, see if you are in that parasympathetic sympathetic mode, um, which I don't necessarily recommend for every single person. But if you are, if you more so operate from that analytical brain, it can be a helpful tool to say, yeah, I am making changes and you can measure it that. What's a good affordable uh, HRV uh, heart rate variability monitoring system that you've learned to recommend? Um, people, I mean, people who have purchased HeartMath um, seem to love it and you, you get that system um, and you're given actual tools that help to get into that parasympathetic mode as well. But I've recently learned that there are apps that you can download um, on your phone, and I, I think, I don't know of the name off the top of my ha head, but heart math, I've heard continually amazing things. Have you heard that in your own practice? Sure, uh, yeah, uh, heart math is a good option, but I really don't have a specific uh, heart rate variability monitor that I, I recommend on a regular basis. So I was almost asking out of my oh, okay. personal interest, there are a few and we can link them too. I can get the names and we can link them here because um, there are a few apps that I have understand they can like send you a device and you can keep track. Um, cool. But again, that's not what I really recommend all the time for every single person because sometimes you can get a little perfectionistic when you start yeah. to say, oh, okay, well, it's variable here, but not here. And um, so each person is different. And so if you're watching and you're like, oh, should I measure that? It is up to you if you do feel that anxiety if about measuring heart rate vari variability, maybe leave it I out. I do know about that aura ring that some of my patients have been have been getting uh, the mm -hmm. device that monitors quite a few things about your your personal system and including your heart rate and the yeah. variability. Yeah. So why don't you just mention quickly EDS? That's Ehlers Danlos syndrome. I heard you throw that out. Mm -hmm. The hypermobility. Do you see that a lot in your patients? I do. Yeah. I've been working more and more with people who have EDS, and I think it's because I was sort of thrown into this EDS world with a. a practitioner friend of mine who's a physical therapist who works a lot with people with EDS. Um, and I, I also know of people who have kind of the EDS hypermobility symptoms, but they don't have that diagnosis. And it's, it is a tough diagnosis to hear because um, there are so many sort of there's so much information about it. Like there's, there's no hope. You have to deal with the symptoms. You have to live this way forever. And it's really stressful to hear that, you know, from a practitioner, really from anyone. But I know that I heard that a lot, you know, not from you, Dr. T, but from other people, um, other practitioners who had told well, me. You know, how this is a good time. I think I should inject that, uh, <laughs> you know, much like with autism, uh, I think EDS is a way more common entity in the community now mm -hmm. than it ever was in the past. And, you know, when I went to medical school, it's quite rare. Mm -hmm. And there was a few genetic uh, abnormalities that were associated with it. There were different types and so forth. But now I think that what we're learning and what uh, science is even showing is that there are these various acquired forms and uh, that it's oftentimes related to environmental exposures and, and trauma and the way our brain is responding uh, that actually results in the actual hypermobility. Yeah. And, so, and the, the flip side to that is that I believe we're gonna find that there's quite a bit of reversibility to it. So I, I like my patients to not look at it necessarily as a life sentence, right? Uh, you know, and it's just a, a fate accompli, you know, that uh, it, it is one of the, uh, the additional manifestations, uh, yeah. just like the other features of dysautonomia, uh, you know, orthostatic hypotension and all those kinds of things, even syncope, even passing out. Yeah, That right. many, much of this is basically we're seeing more and more of it, just like we're seeing more and more of the autoimmunity and the other features of, of chronic illness uh, having to do with progressive environmental de degradation and a more stressful uh, life experience that we're all having even more now than than ever before. So, yeah. yeah, 
Exactly. And what I tell people with EDS is that let's look at the nervous system. Let's look at this autonomic nervous system dysregulation and let's look at each symptom and start to retrain your brain's association to physical activity and these things that maybe have been limited. And it starts there. And once you're able to do that, all of a sudden, and you're operating in that parasympathetic mode, it's incredible to see what your own body does, how your own body makes changes. And so I encourage people to, to take that one step at a time. And just like you were saying, this, it, there is a possibility of this being reversible. And um, holding on to that hope and understanding that that is a possibility and there are um, ways to do that. It's just so important with any chronic condition. You know, I wanted to maybe expand also just a tiny bit about the whole food sensitivity and intolerance issue. Of course, I see that constantly in my practice. And one of the things that's exciting is that when I tell people that the toxins and the stresses are triggering their brain into this place of fight flight or freeze, and that that basically causes the brain to make the body be more hypersensitive or hypervigilant, not only to sound and smell and taste and touch, but also the immune system becomes more hypervigilant to threat. And that one of the ways this manifests itself in, in real life is uh, increased uh, intolerance to many things, many perceived threats like for example, gluten or tomatoes or citrus or, or nuts or what have you. And so uh, a lot of people come in to me and they, they've read a lot about the mast cell, mast yeah. cell activation syndrome or mast cell activation disorder and histamine intolerance. And I always like to try to help people understand that this is just uh, names that have been given to this immune hypersensitivity inflammatory response exactly that's resulting from the brain being in this place of threat and that it's all very very reversible once we can learn to uh, tr retrain i love that and i love how you you said that it was just so eloquent but i think it's also just so important for you know us as practitioners to be able to talk about this because plenty of times i have people come to me and they're like no i have these food sensitivities it says here and it's important to understand that, yes, you are sensitive to those right here, right now. This is a snapshot in time, but it's really this understanding that this is your body's response in inflammation and asking why. Why is your body responding in that inflammation? And understanding that it's when, when you're not only sensitive to, like you mentioned, tomatoes and gluten, but you start to become sensitive to almost every carbohydrate and vegetable and fruit, these are all good indicators that there is some sort of autonomic nervous system dysregulation happening. And although the body's responding in inflammation, that's just, this is a label of these, um, you know, mast cell and, and some of these other inflammatory diagnoses. We've got to get to the bottom of why the body's responding in that inflammation. Yeah. And so luckily, yeah, that's something we can absolutely address. That's a, it's a, it's a fun one, but it's a controversial one for sure. Yeah. Sometimes there's a tendency to break it down into individual little subparts and for, and forget about the fact that it's all part of a whole, Yeah, you know, and, and really if we can deal with the whole, the triggers and then the consequences of, of those, and the way they're shifting the brain and that we can shift it the other way. Yeah, and what happens to the body when we start to calm that stress response, get into parasympathetic mode, and see what the body does for itself. I mean, I have some, I have some people who will say after like a week of doing the program, they're like, oh my gosh, I went to Starbucks and had a coffee. And I'm like, that wasn't on your plan that we were going to do it that way. And they're like, yeah, but I, I drank it and I didn't have any sensitivity to caffeine and I'm like okay I don't always recommend just jumping the gun like that but that's just a drastic example of what happens when you start to address the nervous system and you start to address the brain and how quickly you can see changes um, what about what about when you have somebody that as part of their picture of illness 
has the kind of mitochondrial dysfunction, fatigue, and total intolerance to exertion that can come back and tell you after a week or two on the program that they went off, went out and walked for further than they've ever walked, or they actually did some stretching and exercises in 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 the home, and, mm -hmm. and you know they act like, oh my God, I can't believe I even did that. But I like to let people know that that these consequences are are can often be very quickly reversible. Yeah, and it's so cool to see your body do that and take control. Um, and then you learn your limits, and then you know you you know okay, I'm gonna. <laughs> walk today instead of run because this is new to me and 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 it's this process too of trusting yourself learning to trust yourself and learning to trust your capabilities and I know that you know personally my story when I started to see changes it took me time and I got to like about eight months of brain retraining and I you know considered myself fully recovered and after that, I was like, what else can my body do? And then I went skydiving and then I, you know, went rock climbing. And, and so it was just so cool. Now I have that evidence in my brain stored that I can do these things, that I am capable. And of course it does take time but to see that the body can change like it does. The brain is malleable. The body changes. It's powerful. It's, it's a wonderful thing to realize. Yeah. I'm curious, you know, you know that I've been involved in addition to active neuroplasticity techniques like VitalSide offers that we've actually been doing some work as well with passive microcurrent yeah. and the way that that can actually often induce some rather rapid uh, brain retraining or brain reset. Have you done any work at all with that along with the VitalSide? I have had a few clients, you know, who have been doing vital side and have, you know, partaken and you're talking about the microcurrent neural feedback, the ISIS. And what I find when you combine active and passive neuroplasticity, it's just, it's this recipe for making these long-term changes to the brain that stick. And sometimes I see people who maybe, you know, you mentioned they have um, that mitochondrial dysfunction, they're feeling fatigued, and they may feel like overexerting themselves and doing an active brain retraining course is not something that they have the motivation for now. And that's often when I will recommend the passive neuroplasticity because you don't have to do anything. You don't have to think about it. You don't have, you just show up. And, um, you know, just a couple of minutes, there's this passive brain retraining process that takes place, kind of getting you back into that state of parasympathetic. And I think then the more you do that and the more evidence is built up in the brain that, oh, I can access this um, response, you're more likely to then say, okay, now I'm going to do an active neuroplasticity program, which is more sustainable in the long term. Like I can do that for months and months, for years if I wanted to. And so that's kind of the, the sequence of events that I see just work wonders. It like give the passive like gives you some space and a certain mm -hmm. amount of resilience that you can then build on with retraining techniques or active techniques. Yeah, it's that catalyst to saying, hey, there is a different way of being for me. Now let me do it on my own. Yeah, and yeah it's just such a cool process combining the two. That's, that's like since, you know, we've, I've been focusing on the role of stress and brain retraining, whether it be active with vital side or passive with uh, microcurrent, uh, is, is just that it's, uh, it's something that can gain ground for you quickly in terms of seeing symptom resolution or say food intolerance or fatigue or exercise intolerance. Uh, but that I tell my patients at the same time though, we have to focus on the environmental triggers, uh, whether, it be, mm -hmm. whether it be a Lyme diagnosis or heavy metals or electromagnetic frequency exposure. We also wanna pay some attention to that too. Although I've seen so many cases where without even necessarily dealing with the underlying environmental triggers, we've seen people dramatically recover. And it just goes back to that resilience of the body, right? And like, if you set the body up for success, 
what can your body do? What can your immune system do? How can it fight off infection and, and, and thrive and learn to thrive and live symbiotically with bacteria? And um, yeah, there, there, are, there is a good time and a place for it. And that's why like, I'm so happy to be connected with you and to have that component to healing and then being also able to address the brain and empower people in this way to regain control of their health. And so it's wonderful to have a combination. Sure. I mean, it's really, you've got to think about all the parts. And I, I don't think that necessarily in any one part is necessarily that much more important than the others. Uh, but you kind of kind of have to work across that broad front. And I, I know that's what worked for you. And it, it's what works for most all of my patients. The other thing I was, I was excited to hear you say is that in addition to helping people recover from chronic illness, the techniques of vital side can even help healthy people become more functional and, and more optimal. I don't know if you've had very many opportunities to do that, but. Yeah, and, and luckily I've got this new program coming up in just a couple of months called Healing in Your Hands. And it's this process of going from acute stress stopping that acute stress before it becomes chronic stress. And I always really did, you know, want us to do a program like this because I think preventative health care is so important. I mean, you see it. And, and I remember uh, reading your book actually and understanding like you've seen chronic illness so much, you know, it's starting in Colorado, right? And like the, and the diseases you were seeing there, people were so far in it. And that kind of stuck with me because that's what I've seen in vital side. And now I think we have the opportunity to address chronic stress before it affects the health in a detrimental way. And being able to, to address that now when we are experiencing more trauma. I mean, if you are experiencing sleep issues, maybe cortisol dysregulation, maybe more anxiety, um, hyper awareness. I've had people reach out and say, this is what I'm feeling. I don't have a chronic illness. What can I do? I mean, so I this think it needs to be taught in schools. I, mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I think the kids need to be aware of it, especially now that they're all bathed in Wi-Fi and they all mm -hmm. carry smartphones. And yeah, uh, I'm excited to hear about what you're doing in the area of prevention. Tell us more about that. Yeah, so what it kind of combines, it does combine the science, the physiology, what I teach, how to retrain your brain's stress response immediately when you deal with trauma. But this program is actually also with Beth Meisner, who's the founder of Abundant Health. And she's going to be going into the energetic work we can do using Qigong. So I'm so excited to combine both of these, the science and the energy medicine, and make it geared toward people who have families. So she's actually doing um, one video specifically for families, what people can do together to make changes using Qigong exercises, fun things that they can do. And all of this is, is geared toward getting out of that acute stress response, taking preventative care of your health so that you can stay ahead of any of these detrimental conditions, these chronic conditions. And I think it's so important to have something that's structured. I, I know a lot of people say, practice mindfulness, meditate. It can feel overwhelming to just be told that and not have a plan. So th this video will have that plan, um, what you can do day to day to make quick shifts, positive changes to your brain, to your energy, and to help prevent um, that acute stress from becoming chronic. I had been reading about some programs to really teach children, even as young as kindergarten and you know early primary grades, uh, learn about things like Qigong and meditation and you know, coherent breathing and uh, little self-hypnosis self tricks and mm -hmm. positive visualization. So I love it. I think, I think we need it more and more, hopefully, to stop this epidemic of chronic illness in its tracks. Yeah, and I think now, I mean, of course, we hear pandemic everywhere, but people are still diagnosed with chronic conditions every single day. And the way that we can take care of our immune system, of of 
preventing chronic illness or treating it now, helping ourselves in the best way we possibly can is through addressing the brain. Having these techniques is vital to, to health at this point, creating that kind of warrior mentality, but even the physical warrior, so important right now. Well, Lindsay, keep, keep up the good work. I'm so, uh, I'm so happy for what you're doing and it's been so important so, to so many of my patients. Uh, as we as we wrap up, are there any parting comments that you might want to give our listeners about what what lies ahead for you, or uh, just some last minute tips? Sure. Um, yeah, I actually have a quick tip that might be really helpful for you, Dr. T, and for people sitting at home. Something that you can do. I, I like to give people quick exercises that they can use to make changes to their state. And so something that I've found to be really vital right now, really kind of something you can use in the moment, is called left nostril breathing. And you just plug your right nostril and breathe out of your left nostril. And what happens is while you're doing, <laughs> I'll unplug my nose because <laughs> that sounds funny. But when you do that for just a minimum of a minute, what you're doing is you're bringing oxygen to the right side of your brain, the part of your brain that houses that parasympathetic response. And so that's just like something quick that you can do just for a minute. It's kind of fun. You can get your kids to do it, but you will feel this shift, this little shift to activate that parasympathetic growth and repair response. So something you can do just to always, the, always the right nostril for that, for that. Trip. Yeah. And there are different techniques you can use. There's alternate like nostril breathing, but specifically to get to trigger that parasympathetic response, it's left nostril breathing. Cool. Nice little tip. Yeah. And, and I, if, if you are at home and you do have questions specific about your symptoms, like I mentioned, I schedule those complimentary calls. I'm happy to answer questions about your conditions. And you can find that on www.vital-side.com. Vital-side.com. Great. Well, Lindsay, keep up the good work. Stay safe. Uh, keep having fun with this. I know from the smile on your face that this is fun for you and <laughs> satisfying for you. So that's tremendous. I hope, I hope everything's well with, with your family too. Awesome. Thank you. So God bless, Lindsay. Talk to you soon.